Okay, so let's talk about RefineEdge and QuickSelect because these two working together, um, this is, as I mentioned before, this is really the key to the difficult stuff, which is masking hair. Uh, and people, th this is sort of the holy grail of selections in Photoshop, and it's something that I think it was CS3 that we were really putting a lot of effort into this, and, and we took it a lot further in CS4. But again, we believe that this is the foundation of Photoshop, and we need to be able to do that really well. Hair is inherently difficult. It's, it's tough. Uh, so let's take an image. These are all, with one or two uh, exceptions, these are all my own images. This is my, uh, my little boy when he was shortly after he was born. He's five now. Um, this was with the original iPhone, a one megapixel image. And I thought, okay, this is a perfect image to show off just how good this stuff is because we've got really low resolution and we've got a lot of hair. We've got his hair and we have a very, very furry cat. And I'm going to show you just how well uh, Quick Select and Refine Edge work. So grab this Quick Select tool. Grab the size brush you want by Control Alt or Control Option clicking. You'll see I'm doing that constantly side to side. And we're just going to start going through here. And at some point, I'm going to tell you right now what's going to happen. The entire image is going to get selected, and you'll think that I've made a huge mistake. And that's all right, because I've actually already told it a lot about the image. If I Option or Alt click and tell it the areas I don't want, you'll notice it's learning. It's saying, OK, you told me you wanted the cat and that little boy in there. So that makes sense. And we come through here, and we get a much, much better selection. Need to put the cat's shoulder in there. But that's it's pretty good. It's not bad. It doesn't look perfect. I'm missing a whisker. There's some stuff going on up top with the fur. It's good enough. Now I'm going to hit Refine Edge. And as I said before, there's all sorts of different ways to look at this. And there are shortcuts to go with those. We're going to look at it black and white. And we're going to turn on Smart Radius. And we're going to pull this way up, like so. And you can see we're pulling out individual strands of hair on a one megapixel image of a cat. Right? So that's, that's pretty crazy. Um, if we look at it closely, there's really there's a lot of detail there. And all we're going to do now is we're going to use this brush right here to the left. And what's nice about this, especially in the black and white view, it uses the same modifiers that we've been using. So I can use uh, my shift to add or my option to remove. I can uh, come right along the edge. And what I want to do, I'm going to hit Option or Alt and say, I don't want that area, don't want that area, clean up that area, clean up that area. This is just working on the transitions of the selection here. So I'm saying, no, clean those up. Now remember how there was a whisker right here. Without even knowing exactly where it is, I'm just going to draw a line, and the whisker is going to pop back in there. So you're just telling it how to clean up the edges, and it does an amazing job. Um, I'll talk through some of this other stuff here because I don't need it in this particular image. I could show the radius of our selection. I could show the uh, original image if I had a, a different view there. I've got these tools here, uh, the hand and the magnifying tool, although you can use your keyboard shortcuts as well. Um, these edge adjustments are pretty much the same as your selection modifiers before. We can smooth the edge of that, which is different. We can feather, which we've been using throughout. We can adjust based on contrast. That's a way to sharpen up something that's really, really different. Uh, and you can shift the edge. This is sort of contract and expand built into one slider. So if I want to go in or out, I can do that. Decontaminate colors, we'll talk about that in just a second. It's actually really powerful, only applies to certain things. Uh, I remember when we were designing this, this was, this was uh, one of the features that I was product manager for. I said, as soon as we get over three sliders, as soon as we get over three sliders in a checkbox, we need to do something about presets. We have to build in something there because no one's ever going to remember all the things they did. So there's a little setting down here for remember settings. Um, just a little bit more background on the development of this feature. When we were building this in, I said, you know what, it would be really great if we could have presets based upon what people are doing. Hair, you know, sky, objects. 
And the engineer that had been working on this was extremely patient with me. And she said, I'll tell you what, you come up with the presets and then see how they work on a different image of the same problem you're trying to solve. So come up with your hair preset and try to, try to assign it to a different image. And I tried and it failed miserably. Okay, I'm gonna try my sky preset. And I tried it on a different sky and it failed miserably. The point was selections are extremely subjective. Every single use case is different. Um, you really have to sort of find your way around the dialogue. And then if you want, you can save your, your settings and save yourself a lot of time. Where this is also really powerful, it's really Refine Edge, which is available through a bunch of these different tools, uh, allows you to output stuff uh, as a selection, that would be normal, as a layer mask, as a new layer, as a new layer with a layer mask, as a new document, or as a new document with a layer mask. So you have a lot of stuff that you can do here and you can save yourself a lot of time. So we'll just do a uh, new layer and click OK. And if we come in here, you can see individual hairs off a of one megapixel image. I mean, it really, really works well. So certain people doubt this one, but I'm telling you, it works, it works great. I think it's the name. It's all I can come up with. It's the only reason I think people wouldn't be into it. Let me show you a more. A, a quick question from the studio. Yeah, you had it. So when you uh, used the feather selection to refine the edge, I noticed there was a little bit of a shadow, what seemingly appeared to be a shadow. Is that still some of the pixels left over from the other background? Yeah, they bleed of? a little bit. A little. And in fact, that's a great leading question to, to the image that I'm going to show. Because in that really low resolution image, there is a point where you can only get so much. And they are sort of bleeding together. With a high resolution image, the good news is you can really, you can get like individual strands of hair, but one of the things you start to notice is color can start creeping into it. I don't know if you guys have ever seen this before, but if you take a picture of a person, like my little boy has blonde hair. I, don't, I have no idea where he got blonde hair from. I don't have blonde hair, his mom doesn't have blonde hair. He has very blonde hair. You put him against the blue sky and you select his hair, and if you look really closely, there's blue in his hair. It's actually an artifact of digital photography. It's one of the very few things that digital photography doesn't do as well. And that's that exact bleeding you're, you're talking about. And the decontaminating colors helps a lot there.